tournament. The Ponda Rapid Swiss 2. International Master William Pascal. Our Ponda and Horses Club is proud to present the Ponda Swiss Rapid 2. And I'm proud, I'm proud to have actually have my microphone back, which is even better. <clears throat> I figured out what was, I think I figured out at least partially the cause um, of my previous microphone issues. The five letters beginning in S-K-Y-P-E. Skype was changing my microphone volume. Every time I use Skype, it changes the volume of my mic from 135. If I don't use Skype, then I don't have any problems. So the solution is to not use Skype. <clears throat> anyway, we've got sound back to, uh, to normal volume. Let me fix the camera here. My screen is a little bit too low. <coughs> Pardon. So we're holding the Ponda Swiss Rapid Sparkle Horse Arms entry for title players Gradis Gravenko Morales Abject Pawn Mr. Sohan that's a strong little group there the troll in a roll unpredictable underrated at 1881 Astro Bay here's the link guys I saw Mr. Slow there he is I saw Mr. Slow he made a comment. Thank God no prizes and ratings are involved. Prizes and ratings are a bad mix. Um, I was just thinking like, you know, it would be fun to like have prizes in my own tournaments. And then I was just like, even if I did have the money to do that, I just wouldn't want the headache. You know, people complaining that, oh, they cheated and they cheated and they cheated. And like, you'd have to like, it would be just such a pain, it wouldn't be worth it. <clears throat> so, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hunting down cheaters. Um, guys, welcome. Ponder Rapid 2, um, the highest rated thus far. We, we're, we're way down in rating in the low, in the low 2300s, <laughs> like in real life. Um, I will get my rating points back eventually when I have some time. I think I should be around 2500. But, um... It doesn't matter for an unrated tournament anyway. So I played this 2200 yesterday. He was like horrendous. It's just like, there's no way I'm 2344, but we got to earn the points back. Mr. Slohan says no cheaters allowed. All right. I have had a long day, but I'm, I'm excited to play. I'm excited to not play arms in the first round. Who did I play last week? It was a really tough pairing. I got Pastor Herrickson or whatever, then grabbed him down in the drawn in the drawn rook end game. I don't see Pastor Herrickson here. I don't see Ibotis. There's a number of people I expected aren't in here. Um, Mr. Sohan with 300 bits donated. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Please gift a sub now and then. We have Mr. Sohan with 800 this week, Jim with 500, Warnaki. Cheer your way to the top. Who's the train conductor this week, Acerbate? <clears throat> All right. So, upon the Rapid Swiss, we did this last week. It worked really well. Well, two weeks ago was Rapid, last week was Blitz. Guys, you have to join the Pond and Horses Club to play. I might have some people trying to join. So if you do try to join, I have to try to add you. We have 147 members. Admittance is decided either by Sparkle Horse or Mr. Coffee. Admittance. The admittance to the tournament. Ayesta is in the lobby. Miralis. Feel free, guys. Morales is in, another strong player. You can join any time. You can leave and come back, whatever. Re-entry, if you will. Not re-entry in a, in a true sense, like when I played Sam Palatnik twice in the same tournament, but that's a cool feature. You can't play the same player twice 
I hate that in the arenas. Like playing the same player four times. Of course, it's a good thing if you have a really good score against them. But, all right, guys, let's get started. We've got eight minutes to start time. Just got some coffee. It's very warm here. June 2nd. Today is, is the birthday of Istvan Cham. Cham Istvan, veteran Hungarian grandmaster. I wish happy birthday to Istvan. And um, many more. 80 years old today. That's really cool. He's probably played some Owen defenses before. <laughs> he likes to play the b6 Sicilian. Like c5, b6 on move 2. It should be called the Chom variation. Sanchez subscribed to tier 1. He subscribed for 26 months. Currently on a one month streak. On a one month streak. So you've subscribed for a total of 26 months, Sanchez. You get the bandit. The pandit badge I wasn't sure how they would work if it would be like 10 months contiguous or if you've overall subscribed 26 months that that's what counts I'm just subscribed to tier one no that's weird why does arms okay arms just didn't say anything he's probably got a pond it he's got a pond it too strong field myself arms DK guy, Krivetko, Morales, 10 year old, over 2000 now. Abject Pawn and Mr. Slowhand, quite dangerous. Troll to Roll, Astrobate. We only have like, we have no players under 1600. You've got a pawned it. No, it's 10 months. No, a year. You had to have 12 months to have a pawned it, I guess. Since I'm not a partner, because I don't have an average of 75 viewers a stream, um, I can't have like two and three year badges. They're like a special feature for fancy features for partners. Um, I guess I'll be an affiliate forever because I, I never really have more than 50 average. I could probably splurge and buy some automated viewers to kick the stream up to 75 average, but that would be immoral. So we'll just stick to the associate degree. Um, anyway, it's all the same, guys. Thanks for supporting the stream. So we're going to be starting in six minutes. Ten players. Here's a link, actually. I forget sometimes we have to disseminate this link. I sent messages to the Twitch subs. I sent messages to people who are members of the Pond and Horses Club. But I don't like to spam stuff. I'm not a charlatan or snake oil salesman, and I don't like to over-promote. I hate when people do that, so I don't like to spam you guys with messages. I like to be low-profile. <clears throat> Cormor and welcome. Welcome to the tournament. Link above if you'd like to play. I hope everybody's a member of the Pond and Horses Club. One day we can have a match with like a team battle with another team. I saw the remaining guys, Parley Grass and, and Vida Levente were having a team battle. That's kind of a cool feature. Team battles. I want to make an announcement briefly. We're still doing a couple of games on Thursday for the subscriber stream, but a little bit of a special event this week. Um, I'm signed up to play in a Hungarian All-Stars Blitz tournament on Lee Chess. So from 8 p.m. on Thursday, I'm going to switch modes from subscriber stream analysis to to playing in the Blitz tournament with Hungarian friends. So we'll stream that. Um, so an hour and a half of game analysis followed by a two-hour um, Hungarian Blitz tournament here on Lee Chess on Thursday. <clears throat> Tomorrow is Weird Wednesday, unusual openings, Blitz and Rapid Chess. I gotta be a little bit more flexible trying new stuff. You know, it's gonna be good. It'll be good to play with these. It's a strong, strong group of players, mostly masters, on Thursday. So, yeah, just Hungarians and, and really close friends of the Hungarian players. It's not a big team, though. Um, all right, Mr. Slowhand, 
You have no game for Thursday. We're always counting on you to have that first really, like, complicated, long game. You better come up with something. Antonio, cheers. Welcome. We've got 12 players so far. Masturbate, you're going to have to work your way to the top 10 this week. You have to earn it. Good to see you, DK guy, Cormoran, Astrobate, Oms, all of you, my friends, Antonio, good to see you. Cheer. Antonio said cheer. No, that's not the right command. Use the wrong command. Um, all right, guys, don't forget to support the stream. Mr. Slohan donated 300 bits today. We can use it. Thanks everybody in advance for playing. You obviously know the Twitch address. Um, I've also got the YouTube in there. Follow me on YouTube. Even some of the regulars probably. Even if you don't watch my YouTube channel or watch the replays. I'm trying to build up the YouTube channel a little bit. One day I'm getting around, getting around to putting some fresh videos on there. All right. <clears throat> so two minutes till we start. Cormorant ranked second. Oms, DK guy. It's a tough lineup. Zen Chess massively underrated at 2179. Oops, sorry about giving that away. Crevid, Co, Morales also massively underrated. I don't know Adject Pawn that well yet. Mr. Slowhand, I think, is pretty solid for 1900. And then Troll in a Roll. Irud, good to see you. And Astrobate. So, all really close friends. Oms just bought some new bits. They look good. Shiny. You sure those aren't counterfeit? They're fresh out of the, they're fresh out of the Twitch ATM. Um, the v, the YouTube is is video chess training. Yeah, the link is in the chat. I just mentioned it because I put the link in the chat, um, chat room for the Ponda Rapid. <clears throat> but I definitely have a link here on on Twitch, the Twitch page as well. As of right now, I'm just doing replays of, of the uh, of the streams. But I've got some other videos, and I will in the future. Be making more material because I find my inner my inner meaning in life <clears throat> all right professional youtuber once Rustin Kamsky puts me out of business <laughs> as a streamer Rustam but seriously guys one minute and 15 seconds till the tournament is gonna start yeah, there's no sirens. I'm sorry, I'm like hallucinating. Did we see the arena quote today? The arena quote, Tartakover. I'm sorry, Tarash. I have a slight, I have always a slight feeling of pity for the man who has no knowledge of chess. If you really want to diss someone, you say that to one of your chess playing opponents. I think that Tarash meant it for people who don't play chess at all, but it would be kind of a diss insult for someone who actually plays chess like Kasparov calling Kasparov calling Shirov a chess tourist or whatever <clears throat> <clears throat> all right so 30 seconds left I like to play like Nims a bitch forget about the quotes how could I lose to this idiot why is clock more forward than yours? Mine is actually looking on time. I had that word my tournament acted funny. The first time I did one of these, it like started at the wrong time. Yeah, Mr. Sohan, I don't know. There could be some strange bugs. Probably the stream, um, just refresh your page. I would just refresh the page, dude. You probably have some lag or something. All right. So I get one of the opponents I know the least about. Although I played him 10 times, I still don't really have a good clear picture I think just your your uh, your web page needs to be refreshed Mr. Slow maybe I'm disconnected from the internet wow maybe I'm disconnected what's going on around here So how is Abject Pawn not forfeited? Is there some sort of bug? What's going on? Am I am I lagging? Oh 
let's check. Ping, 51, server, 0.1 milliseconds. In Swiss, you have to wait. Wait for what are you talking about? Oh, in Swiss, you have to wait? Are you serious? I don't understand. Then why the countdown before the game starts? That doesn't make sense. Let me understand this. There was like a warning countdown before the game started. So what happens now if he starts to try to make a move now? Are you serious? Like he's forfeited, but the clock still has to tick down? Are you serious? Like he can't start now with five minutes and 30 seconds? That's absurd. All right, they're gonna have to work out the bugs here. This is clearly not a bug, but like a... He can come late? What? But there was a countdown before the game. What's that for? HTTP already in first place. What? That's weird. The countdown is like to forfeit people who... That was a countdown to start the game? Are you serious? Huh. Well, it's fine by me. Whatever. Um, anyway, that's what we were doing over the board tournament. So let's... I don't want to leave the, um, the game and, like, forfeit. That's the only problem. How can I watch another game... without like leaving this game and forfeiting my game or something. Open a new tab. Is that gonna, then I'm gonna have to fix it on my, my stream labs or something though. So that makes things very complicated. That will require me to actually, that would require me to actually have to do some work. All right, this is, no, it doesn't. That actually works. A new tab works. All right can watch my own stream. Uh oh, we have a re request to join the club. Club request. Outlier 2020. 84 games. He's got a lot of blitz games. <clears throat> Alright, well we can always kick them out if they're a repeat troll or something. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Outliers in. Seven games in play. What am I talking about? All right, so profile. Let me know if my game starts, guys. Profile. I'm a little slow on the uptake here. There we go. All right. So, Pond and Horses. Swiss Blitz. Pond and Rapid. Here it is. You're playing, join the game. Can we watch another game? Cormoran against Fuzzy Logic. Alms against Mr. Slowhand. There's a good battle. Oh, this is uh, the the Nigel Short variation. It's much older than Nigel Short. But it's an un unusual line of the exchange variation with 97. I'm trying to remember how this goes. Knight F3, I don't remember. What other move would there be, though? What would have happened if he had played like queen takes f2 check, rook takes f2, pawn takes h5? <coughs> I guess it's just bad for black. Queen e4. I don't remember seeing this before. Wow. All right, we'll keep an eye on our board. We're going to likely win by forfeit. Abject pawn doesn't show up. Is he forfeited from the tournament if he forfeits against me, or does he just stay in continuously forfeiting games? It's my first ever Lee Chess live stream forfeit victory. Maybe. So he's kicked out of the tournament, you mean? It's one thing to be forfeited in the game, but forfeited after the out of the tournament. Okay, so this is a weird position. A 
It's not easy to get Mr. Slowhand out of his book. Actually, both of these guys. German battle. Deutschland versus Deutschland. So they're both actually really well healed in what they play. I've never tried the exchange variation of the Royal of Pez against Oms. Not something I like to do with white. Guys, welcome. Thank you for the, you know, thank you for being part of my stream. Looks like we're going to win by forfeit. We'll be able to focus on these other games a little bit during the first round. Abject pawn. It happens. I've never forfeited a game straight up in a tournament, but I did forfeit an adjournment, sadly. Hello, Darth Vader. Okay, so what, what do we got? This exchange variation? I don't want to make commentary that will, you know, influence the game or anything. This is where it'd be good to have a little bit of, like, time delay. Like poker tournaments. <clears throat> it's not much delay in the stream. Outlier. So. Okay, we won by forfeit. Back to tournament. Yes. Leading the tournament. Outlier and Save a Dog get half point buys. We'll follow some games here. Let's take a look at Cormoran. It's got to be more exciting. What happened here? Cormoran versus Fuzzy Logic. Classic Queen's Gambit style structure. Usually Cormoran plays the English. Uh huh. That's the problem with the English. There's nothing you can do against e6 and d5 or play the stupid Reti, which I hate. He played the Reti. And then transpose to the Catalan. B6, CD5. I see this all the time. Cormor played a strange move with knight a3 there. Keep his C file open. I was expecting a maneuver ninety one, ninety three, actually. DK guy loves the Catalan. This C two is not a happy camper. Ooh, very confident move. H five. Anyway, we got to an end game where it looks like Fuzzy Logic is slightly worse. Cormoran, we know, is very dangerous. He's 2261 question mark. He set up Alakine's gun. Alyukin. Alyukin's semi-automatic with Queen C1. But we don't know much about Fuzzy Logic. He's kind of a new character all right back to our other game mr slohan versus alms switch to tab do you guys see hikara's large stream numbers adding viewers to his other streams as well in the chess category um <clears throat> well like is he doing video games and other stuff? I mean, he's getting. Where is he getting these people from? Seriously, are are they because he's streaming video games? He they they're not. They can't have come from chess players. I mean, he must have got a large chunk of viewers from from doing video games, collaborating with popular streamers. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like you know, it's gonna carry over a bit. I don't know how much. 
<clears throat> now he's he's got so many viewers that that other people are interested, but only the, the you know time will tell. Wait looks a little behind in development here. Yeah, Hikaru is really successful with it. But I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. I mean, I felt like he made a mistake by... I made my public opinion that I made a mistake, that he made a mistake um, by cutting down on playing, you know, and focusing more on being a chess streamer. It's his choice. You know, maybe he gives up any hope of becoming world champion or staying in the top, the top 10, but betrays that for financial security. I don't know. All right, guys. You pays your money and you takes your choice. Fuzzy Logic really putting up resistance against Cormoran, who's second seed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That makes me feel kind of bad, Zen Chest. No need to point it out. As I said last stream, I'm not competing with anybody, you know. I just do my thing. And uh, it's probably good for everybody, though, you know. He's, he's helping Chess to be more popular. I don't think Maurice actually changing the rules of how points are scored are going to make more people play Chess. But it's possible that what Hikaru is doing will actually get more people involved. I'll definitely admit to that. Now, Maurice has tournaments every five or six years where he tries to change the rules of tournaments and stuff. It's just a joke. I mean, whatever. He's been trying to make chess more popular since, since the early 90s. <laughs> it's kind of boring. Um, Maurice and Greg Shahadi like constantly trying to to change the format is going to magically make chess an ESPN sport. But seriously, what Hikaru is doing is... No, no, not the Millionaire Open. Well, the Millionaire Open was one of many things, yeah. So chess, he must have been... He, Maurice got, got the Billionaire in St. Louis to help him organize some tournament a couple weeks ago or last week. All right. Anyway, Mr. Slohan run out of time. We got a battle here. Fuzzy Logic putting up resistance. Played very like aggressively against the favorite Cormoran. Tactical end game. Didn't know the theory. Our last game was interesting that the B3 Kings Indian, Mr. Slow. Seems like it was pretty normal in the opening. This is a tough one. The white's got that clear pass pawn. Black with active bishop, active rook, active king to compensate. This is this is tough. We've got an increment of three seconds. It does look hard for white to win. Cormoran risking. Risking the, the G pawn to go for it. Who is Fuzzy Logic? Do I ask this question every week? 228. He's got a lot of games, actually, tons of games. This is looking very tricky. 
equal material now. Still plenty of time left. So, <clears throat> I'm going to throw out the link there for anyone else who shall need it. This is the tournament link. If you're interested in playing, it's not too late. We've got to check for join requests. Before every round, I have to remember. You can join the Pond and Horses Club. Where are we? Where's Blobix? Wonder if Blobix we're competing with one of Blobix's gorilla tournaments or something. There needs to be like a tournament clearing house. All right, guys. I had a forfeit victory in round one. Nothing fuzzy about this logic. That's not looking good. Risk not, want not. What is the same? I guess Cormoran just couldn't, he couldn't go for it. He basically tried to do the impossible. That's how I lost a game to a 2100 in the Hungarian in the Budapest Teen Championship in February. I just refused to take a draw by repetition. I was like irrationally trying to win, a position where I couldn't make progress. It's always tricky in poker as in chess to maintain rationality. I guess Cormoran just had to take had to take like a repetition at one point and he tried tried for more. Um all right guys, Luke, how much time do we got? Next round is starting. View tournament. <clears throat> all right, 25 seconds to go. So, fuzzy logic lo logic. Fuzzy logic. Thanks to HTFP for the donation 100 bits. We can't take as many risks with the increment as we would with with like sudden death, time controls as well. I have not really played a game. Oh man. See this 22 seconds to play the first move. That's weird, isn't it? What's the point of that now? You see what I'm saying? We don't need that anymore. If you're not gonna be punished for not starting the game in that time, right? What's that bonus time about? We don't need that. That's that's for arena. So that's basically adding another minute to the tournament time. Yeah, you don't want to be in a bad mood when you play chess. It doesn't help. Maybe for some people it does. Not for me. So I'm just playing knight of 3d5. So you don't try the Sicilian invitation. What am I going to do? I don't even know what he plays anymore. Usually I played e4 against Enchess because I like playing against the Nidorf. Oh, this thing. I think I had a game like this. This is the game, ironically, not this exact move order, but this is the game I lost I was just talking about where I overpressed against the guy. <laughs> Because I refuse to take a draw repetition. Okay, knight b6 is some sort of bizarre move. Not recommended. No, I mean, black should play some sort of normal move here, knight f6. Knight d7 is not bad, Zen Chess. 
but I think this this is suspicious. The knight b6 is suspicious. <coughs> Muy suspicioso. I don't think that's a real word in Spanish, but it could be. Fozzy bear. Suspecio suspechoso. Maybe six. Get some free Spanish warm up lessons from, from Morales. I haven't studied Spanish since my senior year in high school. It's been a while, you know, since I am 39. By the way, like somebody was lying and claiming that Kamsky was 38, but I didn't get the joke. There's no way that Kamsky is 38. I'm definitely younger than Kamsky. He used to be younger than me, but now I'm younger than Kamsky. It's strange how that works. Um, C4. At some point I snuck behind him in the space-time continuum. You got your bishop out to f5. That was kind of tricky. How did you do that? So that's the plan? Man, this is messed up. You're willing to pay the price with that knight on b6 to get your bishop outside. Very weird. Perhaps not that bad for black, though. Okay, guys, tomorrow, Weird Wednesday, I'm playing Blitz and Rapid Chess with unusual openings. Then Thursday, I'm doing a two-part stream. Half a stream of game analysis and half a stream of Hungarian All-Stars Blitz Tournament. Quite a few good players. There should be some GMs. It will be a rated blitz tournament. Now C5. My god, where do you come up with this stuff? I should take. Always take. I learned that from a GM. On Thursday, um, we're going to do game analysis from 6.30 till 8 p.m. CEST. And then from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., I'm playing in the Blitz tournament. It's a 3-2. 3-2 arena. Two hours. So he corrected. Self-correcting night. <clears throat> This must be something that you laid awake at night coming up with. <laughs> knight b6. That's new. I find knight f6 is pretty good. You can play the nanu. With what Keith Arkell calls the speckled hen. Something like b5. Knight f6 followed by b5. Totally legitimate system. Knight b6 is really weird. I think the speckled hen is, is more sound. So let me check the um, Pawn and Horses Club. Freddy Norlbot from Croatia is challenging me to a 3 0 rated game. Okay then. Maybe not today, another time. I'll play some simul games while I'm waiting. I don't play bots, especially not rated. Where you been, Zen Chess? Only I could play e4 somehow. Aronyan like pawn sacrifice. <clears throat> I feel it. I'm feeling it. You recently purchased oh my Trompaski video. 
This is stuff that I did for chess lecture. I'm a firm believer, even now, in that system that I prescribed there, in that. D5 against Trumpowski um, with the G capture on F6. Probably the best system against Trumpowski. Glad that it can be helpful. So E4, obviously you take to the bishop, man. I mean, we're getting a lot of play, but it's the take with the knight that bothers me more. E4, knight E4, knight E4, bishop E4, queen E2. He can bail with bishop takes F3. He gets out. What if I play D takes C5 first? And he takes on c5, I play e4. Other interesting possibilities there. The fact that his bishop is unprotected might present us with some tactical opportunities. Okay, g7 is just hanging. Well, that's that's major factor, so... Nice new subscription badge for Juicebox Wizard. Is that a new one? Oh, you mean you just just realized because we just installed them. I'm a little slow on the uptake. Interesting. Rook c1. Black's holding on. e4, knight e4. Knight e4, bishop e4, queen d4, knight f6, just also bishop f6 for that matter, so that's not going to work. <clears throat> but I think I have a lot of good moves here. At least a few. Knight d4. Kind of a simple approach. No threat with that move. Any books I recommend to study for a 2000 level player? A lot of books. But it's hard to list them all. Um, that's kind of an advanced player. The Middle Game by Uva this is like my favorite. So what about this position now? H3. Well, H3 can't hurt, right? Famous last words. I still think it's a positive move for white no matter what. Okay, my plan was to play c6 anyway. I don't see how to protect that really conveniently, the pawn on c5. We'll just do it this way. Broke several bones. Dude, where did that come from? You just realized <laughs> I broke several bones. You've been on bed rest. Do I want to know why you broke several bones? That's that's Uva. The former world champion. E U W E. I like that middle game series. The middle game. Okay, so Zen Chess has sacrificed a pawn. We have a good game. Everything looks okay. Healthy baby pawn up. Hmm. 
Yeah, subscribes subscribers have new badges. I'd like to thank Berenzen for that. But it is a huge advantage here. Hmm. Blockading. <clears throat> All right. So G4, he could sack a piece or something. I'd rather not do that. The birds, it's like Hitchcock. There's a whole lot of birds squawking. The movie, The Birds. This is a really cautious move. Under the circumstances. That's not a cautious move. <clears throat> Bazin chess is really dangerous tactically. Positionally, he's kind of sunk here. Still finds a way to defend. Interesting. There's no way to defend. The knight b6, though. <laughs> that is really strange. Wow. They're distraining to find new ideas. Agrest, Alexienko, Blue Bomb has played it twice. This is seriously misguided advice. No, I mean, maybe it's not that bad. It was honestly like later. This this doesn't look that bad. We're following some games, actually. I still think that white is better, but it's playable. Very strange. Sanchez is on the cutting edge <clears throat> of theory. <coughs> it's on the cutting edge. Let me refresh this. Arms at one and a half. Four ongoing games. So I'm um, in first place. Arms, there's still a bunch of games going. DK guy, let's see what he's doing. You know you're in trouble when, when Morales plays E5. <clears throat> That's been my experience. The most E5 centric player in the history of chess. Looks like DK guy is playing the French or something. Maybe that's the secret to beating Morales. You've got to play the French. <sighs> Surgery.
At least my losses are a master strength players. Good way to go, has to be. No, no excuses. <clears throat> oh, this is interesting now. Unpenetrable. It's impenetrable. Is it an impenetrable fortress? <laughs> now, it, now it is. No, I don't know. Good lord. What? Strange decision to play G5, but it might be might be interesting. I have no idea what's going on with these guys now. Losing their minds collectively. Both players lost their minds. I think DK guy was close to winning. Previously. I thought he could maybe put weight in Zuzwan. But he in insisted on forcing things with G5. This is potential to be a massive up upset in the making here. Baby chess. See if we got some more WikiLeaks. Hey Wiki, Wiki, what's up, Antonio? I don't know. After G five, man, you're you're okay probably. But DK guy had you in in near Sugzban. That's a very strange escape. Just like when it looked like. He was winning. Well, I'm not sure. Does, can he put you in Zuzwan? It's basically a king and pawn game. If DK go, walks his got king over to the other side and gets the opposition, you're probably lost, right? Well, we're not expecting perfect games. That was a sort of slimy victory. Oh, we get we get Morales. And I'm black, my favorite color. <clears throat> Next game. I should have played E6 first move. Get him out of his comfort zone here. Do we have this before? So what happens on bishop here? We've had this already? You need your central pawn? I guess you, you do. You can always play c6. Jesus. He's celebrating his win against DK guy a little too hard there. I don't know about that move. Phew, that was close. He was still too pumped up from the last game. Now I had a forfeit victory and that. I <laughs> really dominating the tournament. Oh man. Alright. I'm not happy you robbed me of a good game. For your sake, I won't analyze that. See, that was your inner guilt about winning that very dubious position last round. 
you felt guilty and according to Freudian psychotherapy that's why you lost to me in four moves but you better be careful that it's a good thing it wasn't raided because otherwise like Lee Chess would probably be flagging you for <laughs> for throwing games on purpose um, that sucks dude I definitely didn't expect that. So rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, bishop takes b5, bishop takes e4, knight c3. If I'm being honest, though, I don't think you should... I guess I thought you should play, like, knight c3 right away. Um, no, I guess I'm trying to say, like, you shouldn't play a takes b. A takes B, bishop takes E4. It's funny because my original intention was to play bishop takes E4. Then I thought, well, why not just throw in AB first? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right, I'll let you. It's a shame it wasn't raided, though. I really could use some points. Let's take a look at Ams' game. Ams is following. Oh, Ams against the Tarash. No, Ams is playing the Tarash against this new character. Who is Outlier 2020? But it's unlikely that it's a troll um, playing this. Kind of mainline Tarash. Bishop f4. But Bishop f4 isn't a mainline. Bishop g5. We'll let you forget it, Antonio. Try not to focus on it. You got plenty of time to think about what you want to do with your life. I'm having an easy time of it. Just think about this. I lost the tournament game in like eight moves once with white when I was a master. If that makes you feel any better. I just left a knight on prees. In a really ridiculous way. But I want you to forget it too. Anyway. 43 viewers. Let's try to get up to 75 every stream. Come on. Push for partner. I'm not up to date here in the position. Classic Tarash. Pawn on d4. Oms really knows his stuff, man, in this Tarash. I've tried a number of different lines. And he makes it look like a credible opening. The crow. He knew that if he beat me, I would be crying and stuff, so he just didn't want to go there. Nobody knows what Pikachu means from Asturbate. He's constantly throwing it out there. I never even wanted to like con contemplate <clears throat> what exactly a Pikachu signifies. Is this a weakness or a strength? If a tree falls in the forest and no one's there, there to hear it, does it really make a sound? The ultimate question. Is a weakness really a weakness if it can't be attacked? That's my question. So I don't know who Outlier is. He's a new member to the stream. If anybody else wants to join the club, Pond and Horses, you have to submit a membership application. Here's the link for the tournament. Still not too late to join. We'll be back tomorrow. 
11 a.m. CET, CEST. It's summertime now. Hard to believe. June the 2nd. Happy birthday, Cham Istvan. Hungarian Nodge Mesh there. And a gentleman. 80 years young today. I'm just gonna randomly play G5. Damn, dude. Don't ask me what's happening here. It looks like black has his fair share of space in the center. G5 was a surprise. If you told me Astrobay was playing black when they played G5, I might believe you. You never know when that move's gonna crop up. I mean, I've had a lot of Nimzos where I have to play G5. Sometimes there's a famous like Larson game where he did it in the Queen's Gambit in a surprising position. Mr. Coffee, good to have you here. Everything's fine. I've had a kind of weird tournament. I had a forfeit in the first round. I won one tough game and then we got a kind of lucky victory. So I haven't really gotten to play properly in the first three rounds too much. But it's nice to just be a host. I think it's more fun. Must be nice to be Maurice Ashley. Just quit chess and shave your head and just talk a lot. I never want to quit though. I, I like playing. Honestly. Turkey farm. Oh my god. Mr. One Two Three Man says hi, Panda. Wiki Poo will come back. <laughs> Where is Wiki Poo? Wiki Poodia. So night B six. What's up with the standings today? By the way, can we go to the Panda Rapid and check? So Outlier had a half point buy and a win. We don't know much about them. Aldisto is in strong field. Pastor Harrickson snuck in. DK guy was slowed by a rather strange endgame. Blunder. Morales with the blunder. Oms and one-year-old is capable of playing well. One-year-old. <laughs> Ten-year-old. There's still four rounds till still four rounds to go after this, so there's a long way to go. Good to see Turkey Farm back. I'm gonna grab a bud. Grab a quick coffee. Don't grab a Heine. That advertising campaign is, is long gone with the Me Too movement. That was funny. Back in the eighties when Heineken was running that. It wouldn't really go down well now. Um, but, um, I don't know why I thought of that. I thought he said grab a bud. For some reason, it's grab a coffee. 95. What's this? Mr. Slohan playing white against Gravetko. Nice king for black here. What? And you're like, what? Mm, how did that happen? C3 Sicilian. It's a Rosalimo. What happened to his queen? Trapped it. Oh my gosh. What a sweet move that is. All right, what else is going on? Let's go back. Very, very crazy complications. Not quite sure what's happening here. 
Looks like Outlier is clearly playing for time. He's only used three minutes, Alms is six. Can't say I'm quite sure what's going on. Knight d5 was pretty much the only move. Evaluation, I don't know about. Maybe this turns the page. Flip the, the script. Guys, thanks for joining my team. Mr. Coffee's here. We have two mods with Yeroen. Yeroen, Yeroen, counting as well. All right, complicated position now. Well, if Wade isn't careful, he'd be down, he could be down a rook. That's strange. I was half expecting White to, to play another sacrifice there with Rook takes C7. Now he's down a full Rook. Bishop f5 covering the threat on h7. The other possibility was, of course, like rook takes c7. But that's probably only good for perpetual. But I don't even know what happens. Queen g5, king f8, queen h6, king e7. I don't even know what's going on. That's a big material investment. White's down like a rook in the exchange or something. If black's king gets away, then maybe black's winning. So I guess arms is considered a favor here. Still not an easy position to play with very little time. Ninety six. Trying to simplify. <clears throat> it's cool though that I have time to actually look at the other games it's a huge advantage we're doing the arena where we're playing constantly it's kind of fun to get to look at some of the other games during the tournament thank you guys for supporting the stream don't, don't forget to subscribe and support the stream tell your friends to join us here if you can publicize the tournament please do so and join our Panda and Horses Club. That was a surprise. 86, Queen E6, F5, Bishop takes F5. I have to admit that I didn't see that either. <laughs> That's weird. I was only looking at like Queen B6 check. Maybe, maybe Outlier thought the same thing. And I also missed it. I think Ams was in serious danger earlier, but I could be wrong. Maybe not. Maybe everything was always under control. It just optically looks scary. Interesting game, guys. So Ams is my biggest threat. Two and a half at the moment. 
He is the other title player. Since we're giving free entry to title players, <laughs> I'm surprised we don't have more. Pastor Harrickson still playing. Oh, this is a classic matchup. DK guy versus Pastor Harrickson. Man, DK guy get, is getting all the nasty pairings. He was 1999 in Blitz, but Pastor Harrickson is, is 1500 question mark. That annoys me. Lee Chess has to just ditch that. That 1500 messes me up constantly. But it just shouldn't exist. There's no reason to put arbitrary ratings next to people's names. Um, Pastor Harrison is much stronger than, you know, he should probably be around 2200. That just makes me think people are weak. I was just talking about this yesterday. The psychological ramification of playing someone with 1500 question mark, no matter how many times I play them and how many times I tell myself, that it doesn't mean anything. It's there. It's like subconsciously, it's like subliminal advertising on TV. If you keep flashing that in front of people, you're going to underestimate that player. It's ridiculous. You know, what's the purpose of that? It has no purpose. Um, it just messes me up psychologically. We keep looking at this player thinking it's 1500. No matter how many times you sell, you tell yourself it's not. It's still there messing you up. Simple question mark, yeah. What's the arbitrary number for? I'm sure that DeBolt will have some argument for that. You know, he has an argument for everything, but I just don't get it. It seems stupid. Time to play, uh oh. Oh. Thanks for warning me. Ten-year-old almost got me on forfeit, but it, it doesn't really get you on forfeit. It's still freaking me out. We don't need that extra time. All right. Ten-year-old also plays the English with white. You'd think he would understand it well with black, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's been a while. You're forfeited if you're online? Um, I hope not. I had some tough games with him in this. Now that I think about it. I can't remember the last one, how it went. I feel like this is kind of the main line of the symmetrical English. The single most important variation the starting point. I played a game with black um, against somebody. HTFP? Was it you? I got a very dubious position on Sunday in the simul. This gambit has never been like fully advocated. I'm still not 100% sure. The best is for white here. Not really considered 100% credible, but every time I face it, it's, it's always like six months in between games where I face this and I never can quite remember what the best way to play is. I hate giving them the initiative though. I need to really learn this. I don't encounter it that often. I always end up making some kind of minor inaccuracy somewhere. I know queen a4 is a move, which I tried to convince myself about. Kind of a strange move in a way. Am I supposed to just play like b3? Like seriously, what's wrong with b3? I'm, I'm sure I've, I've been here before. But I mean, maybe rook b8 is a mistake. A 
the spectacular camel. Thanks for being spectacular. B3 fatal flaw. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't think this should be a big deal. I guess I have to play Bishop B2. White should be okay. Just have to be careful of some tricks. I don't think this is considered sound. Instead of rook b8, I've definitely faced bishop h3. That's like a known line. I think that's pretty much the move. What other move is there? Well, rook b8, but I don't think it's really considered a normal line. Bob, have you been fanning the flames? Certainly no reason for you to troll online when you control in real life. You got enough <laughs> pain and suffering in the in the real world. So you haven't been around. You've been too busy. I mean, the truth is I could sack an exchange here and have pretty good compensation. But I don't think I really need to do that. How does it bode for me that Bob just showed up? Oh, an interesting thing happened today on the political front. I've been talking about this a lot. Actually... Um, I was talking a lot lately about how bookies, because sports betting on politics is legal in like Europe, always have a line on the presidential election. And I was asking how, you know, how come it's always like seemingly in Trump's favor. But an interesting thing happened today for the first time since the, you know, the last election or whatever, Donald Trump is no longer the favorite, even in Vegas. Um, he's actually slipped to to 50-50, negative 110 against negative 110, which is interesting. I just thought I'd get your, your perspective on that. Since you're live at the scene, Bob. Bob is live at the scene. Yeah, it's, not, it's ironic because I've been talking about this all the time of late. I had a very weird game with 10 year old in the simul where the same exact thing happened. Same dark square bishop, completely different opening. Also, I was clearly better and he swindled me and saved the game. I, mean, I have no idea how they handicap political events, but um, that's ridiculous. So you're going to save this game? The same miracle like in the tournament, like in the simul? Holy cow. Totally stunning. Same miracle. Hmm. 
He's going to survive another lost position. Same bishop. Same comeback. He's got 31 to 4 disadvantage against me. What's up with this position? I really didn't want to trade queens. I don't see I'm going to have a choice. You got a gift like yours? What does that mean? I got a gift? But it's not about Biden. Um, Bob, nobody cares, you know. The thing that's going to make Trump lose is how many people hate him. It doesn't matter if it's Biden or Bernie Sanders or, you know. Amy Klobuchar. It doesn't. Biden doesn't have to be popular. It's he's not a populist. But I'm not going to get in an argument. I just wanted to like explain to everybody how interesting it is that for the first time today that actually took place. It's a very significant turning point, you know. And also, Bitcoin is at its highest today since like you know the last year or something. E takes D. This just sucks. So something to do with Bitcoin and <laughs> sports betting. I don't know. But I, I, I just thought... I would prefer if the bookies would, would falsely say that Trump is a favorite, because then I would make more money. But now they're going to handicap it as 50-50. So the bat no longer has any real value, as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> Ten-year-old is pretty amazing. Really nice endgame comeback. I could even be worse if I'm not careful here. Oms has to leave. Yes. It just seems like the world is coming to its senses. I'm just going to offer a draw. Whatever. I'm not going to beat you. Check this out. Rook B8 is the best move. So B3 is a mistake. I feel like I've done this before. That's strange. I can't ever... I have this mental block about remembering this variation for some reason. I have to play Bishop G2 first. But why I can't remember this? You're supposed to play Bishop H3. Then I play bishop g2. And then you have knight e4. Makes perfect sense. And I have to sack the exchange. I have some compensation. Something like bishop e3. Yeah, this doesn't seem great.
So after this, I have nothing. There's nothing. C5 was the best move, just bailing out. Sad, but true. I don't know why I have such a mental block about this variation. I can never remember. It's not even a real variation. It's just supposed to be bad for black. But I never get it often enough to remember what the heck I'm supposed to do. Okay, so we got another member trying to join. First camel. Now that's a strange coincidence. Spectacular camel comes and then first camel. It's an awful lot of camels at the same time. A coin toss between Trump and whoever doesn't seem that sensible. I liked it when I had, you know, Trump as a serious favorite and I took the bet for Biden. <laughs> it's like, okay, free money. But that's probably not going to happen. I don't do sports betting. A lot of poker players are really heavy into sports betting. But, um... I have a lot of friends who are into it. When I saw the odds were heavily in favor of Trump, I was like, okay, whatever. There is no way, you know, that that bet isn't isn't getting taken. But they're never going to let it go all the way to November where Trump is is a heavy favorite in the odds column. All right. That was a pipe dream. You're playing join the game. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Did I lose? Dude, what was that? What is this? Why does it say I'm playing join the game? Why is it telling me I'm playing join the game? Seriously, what is going on? I tried to refresh it. There we go. Two ongoing games. So 10 year old now in second place. Didn't he finish, like, second in the last tournament? He has a draw with Oms, a draw with me. He's gotten much, much stronger. Pastor Herrickson with three. He had a bye in the first round. Oh, he lost. So check out 10-year-old's results. He beat Pastor Herrickson. So he suddenly master strength. He beats Pastor Herrickson. He draws with Oms. Then he beat Oliveira, who's lower rated. Okay, he's a solid favorite there. At least 100 points. But the other three results are all way over his normal rating range. I think that didn't 10 year old have a very good result like a couple weeks ago? Outlier still playing against Aldisto. Good game. But I like bets where, like, the odds are totally messed up and incorrect. <laughs> I'll take that any day. Okay, G5. Now let's do in serious time pressure. And this is messed up. And what are you going to do? He's got plenty of time to think about it, though. Not a lot of choices there, obviously. Interesting position. I mean, you know, I don't want to bet against Trump because I don't like Trump. I just want to bet against Trump if the odds are wrong, you know, which they were before. But now I don't think, you know, we know until November what it's going to be. Well, I mean, you're talking about bookies odds versus polling data. The polling data is like massively in favor of Biden. He's opened up like a 10-point polling lead. 
but um, that was obviously wrong in the last election. But he never knows. I just don't think that's it's likely Trump will win. It's just spiraling out of control. Crazy game. Aldisto. Outliers sort of taking command here. Three pawns. Goodness. Very good technique by White. Check out his time use. What do you think? DK guy is is outlier a bullet player? He's got no bullet games, but it's a it's some sort of Smurf account. Maybe not. He's got a thousand blitz games and no bullet. That's strange. I suppose some people have a. They have a specific account that they just want to play bullet on. You shouldn't have more than one account, but they do it anyway. But he's playing like a bullet player. I don't know what's going on now. Materially, white doesn't have enough to be to be better. First camel, we're holding a tournament, so I'm not taking fifteen fifteen challenges. That was kind of weird. All right. Tomorrow we'll be back with Blitz and Rapid Chess here in the morning. Black resigned with a discovery. What was happening there? I mean, was it even winning? Well, even here he's winning. What was the last move though? So he was holding on with perfect play at this point with queen d5 check. Maybe not. Actually, it looks lost. The engine. Nice um, technique there, outlier. All right, this has got to stop. You've got to stop challenging me, first camel. We're hosting a tournament here. I don't want to have to block you. Where are we? Don't make me block you by repeated challenges. It could be on whatever. The ratings, of course, anyone could be on whatever. If we if we suspect, kick him out. Yeah, Carlson is, is allowed to have two accounts, but not anybody else. It's, it's a democracy. But Lee Chess is not a democracy, it's an anarchy. Pastor Herrickson. But if anyone has, has any reason to suspect that someone is a troll, let me know. And I'll ban them promptly. Man in the van. Oh, he's man in the van. But Dr. Drunkenstein is still here? But he probably let some of them go. He just keeps revolving, but he doesn't keep them all. I mean, it's okay to perpetually keep changing. As long as you exchange your old ones in for the new one. But how many of them are still active? Spectacular camel. Have we confused Pastor Herrickson yet? A6 is okay, but I kind of gave it up. It got, it got kind of overused. Pastor Herrickson thought I was going to take him on predictably in another, in another um, Nidorf, but I'm not going to be, make it easy on you. 
just playing the same thing over and over. I lost against Ultan Varga by playing Knight takes d4 really badly in my last tournament over the board, Rapid here in Budapest, at the end of February. Harrison's thinking. Pastor Erickson. I've heard of Erickson, but Herrickson? What is Herrickson? Son of Herrick? Maybe it's a cross between Erickson and, and Heretic. Pastor Heretic. Heretic son. Pastor Heretic. So, exchanging on d5. Now, obviously, knight takes d5 is exciting. No, I think that, that C takes is the way to go. B5 is under control. Nothing stupid like that. Check there. Hans Ericsson as, as an abbreviation. No, I think it's... um. I think I googled it. It's some kind of character. Leif Ericsson. But I don't know what it, where it comes from. Bob busting the knowledge, dropping knowledge bombs on us. Wow. Would you like to castle queen side? I think I've played this position before. Sometimes I forget to enunciate. Well, it's got to be e5. It's like a Grunfeld. It's been a while since I played this. Holy crap. Well, obviously, you know, I, I mean, I go d4 and he plays like bishop g5. I can't just win a piece or anything. But I think I had a game against somebody. I might have even missed some nice win could get very tactical but Harrison seems to like tactics white is luring black to overextend tragically so obviously I could play bishop e6 instead we have a very serious alternative um Another alternative, bishop b4. But what concerns me there is a3. If bishop b4, a3, bishop c3, yeah, it's not. Not real convincing. This is another variation that I should probably just commit to memory. I'm starting to put them down on the list. The dubious gambit that I faced against the last opponent. This offbeat line. Before I'm gonna to have to develop my bishop. I mean, bishop e7 is safer. Safer does not necessarily make better. Really strange noises coming from outside. Queen a5 is always bad. It's one of our catchphrases. Queen a5, though really put some serious threat on him. It's always bad. What's he going to do on queen a5? Well, he can sort of... I don't know. What does he do on queen a5? I 
feel like I had this against our old friend Tushar or someone. Somebody walked into this back in the day. I think Queen A2 is possible. How do you defend against Queen A2? Hmm. I had that in a game, like Queen A2, Knight F6 check, King D8, and Queen G5. <laughs> I think that actually happened. What is that noise? There's like a weird sick bird sound outside. Queen A2. Jesus, is that coming from outside? It sounds like a dying bird. You guys can't really hear it. It's very faint, but I've never heard it before. Queen A2, knight, knight F6 check, King D8, and then Queen G5. Threatening discoveries. What do I do after that? I mean, that's just too good for, for this guy. He loves tactics. Let's just keep it simple. I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction of some kind of insanely complex middle game. Let's just try to grind him down with our central pawns. I mean, black has a bishop pair, a mass of central pawns. We have to be better here. This is the lesser Less interesting possibility, but certainly I'm still confident. He did something wrong in the opening. Did you win round five, Astrobate? You got a full point by. We had a game against somebody in this a year ago or something. That's about when I stopped playing it. Last year, against a Hungarian kid, um, I finally, this this guy, Karachain Geller, who was like 2200, drew me. And I was like, that's it, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not drawing with 2200s. We're groveling for draws against 2200s. Giant pawn amoeba. The mass pawn mob. Pawn mob in the center. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't really see how I can avoid exchanging the bishop off. Just too, too active, his white skirt prospects. I, I concede. I concede to letting you trade off my bishop pair but my center is still very strong. F5 is tempting. Bishop takes d2, bishop e6, pawn e6. We're definitely better. Obstacle bishops, not so much. Not really into the obstacle bishops thing here. I think my Golko bishop is stronger than a knight, though. Could be wrong. Increase the amoeba. Take with the f pawn, of course. Black is better, but it's not by much of a margin. Now he just blundered. 
Actually, I think he could play bishop takes e6, f e6, and knight c4 with a pretty solid blockade. That was a lucky, lucky blunder. If you look here, this is his golden opportunity. Take it and play knight c4. That's the best opportunity you're going to get here. This I decided would be pretty hard for me to win. This is a very serious blockade by white. Possible like levers with g3 and f4. I might even have made a mistake by not taking the knight on d2. It's a tough call. Look at the computer. Stockfish is like, here's a subtle move, rook c8. That's beyond me though, you know. Rook c8, I think I don't think about that move because I'm hanging my pawn on a6, but it's it's a nice move. Computer thinks I made the best move. I don't know. You got to do this, man. Bishop takes e6, f e6, knight c4. Very hard. Very hard to make these center pawns go through. So we got super lucky. Very lucky tournament for me thus far. Don't really deserve to win the tournament yet. It's not over. 10-year-old against Morales. Morales needs to just kill him in the opening. Morales' openings are brutal, but Morales is black, so that's that's a tougher situation. If Morales is white, it would be very dangerous for a 10-year-old. Still unclear, huh? Don't underestimate the opponent with a question mark rating. But it looks like objectively Morales is up the exchange. What was the opening? Ah, close, close English, reverse Grand Prix. Aha, and so you played our line. Yeah, this, this I recommend in my video series on chess lecture. It was back in like 1990, 1995, I played Michael Brooks, he played this against me. And I was, I sat there, the longest I ever thought on one move was when someone played D5 against me. I think I thought for like 45 minutes in a two hour time control. It was, I was white against Brooksy and, and it was 40 and two time control. And I literally used 45 minutes on move six. I thought for 45 minutes and I played knight takes d5. But actually, cd is, I think, better according to the engine. You caught him in the opening. Yeah, 10 year old's biggest weak point is his openings. I played into a line I played against him before, so he was pretty well prepared. I sort of underestimated him as well. But I don't think I don't think Antonio underestimated him. He's playing really well lately. Thanks everybody for joining us. I'm sorry for scrolling. I know that can be annoying. <laughs> I don't realize I'm doing it. I have an addiction. I have a scrolling problem. Do apologize if that makes anybody seasick. Okay, it's still not over. Tricky bishops. Black has three isolated pawns. And the king doesn't have that much protection, so there's still chances here. Anything could happen. Yeah, it's a good thing king f6 would have been met by, or bishop f5 would have met by king f4 there. There are still tricky traps here. We've run out of ideas. But when in doubt, man, just take the pawn on a7. I'm not sure that, that white is winning here so easily. Maybe c5 will trap the bishop or something. It's objectively winning for black. All right, so Morales is my biggest problem. 
Fortunately, he hung a piece in four moves. I can't do anything to stop him personally. My fate is not in my own hands. You made a game for Thursday against DK guy. Uh oh. <laughs> Listen, guys. Um, only like five games I can do. So, Mr. Slow, you better get it in soon. If you if you want to submit a game for Thursday, please do so very soon. I'm only going to be able to do like five games, and then we have the Hungarian Blitz tournament on Thursday night. Morales is 4-0 except for his 4-move piece drop against me. Sort of half mouse slip, brain fart. Moving before you think. And um, what happened to Oms? He lost a game and he dropped out. He had to go. Chestosterone, good to have you back. Chestosterone dominating. A little Swiss Gambit going outlier. Outlier left. DK guy had a very poor result today. Cormoran also struggling. Those guys would normally be right at the top, so they're both having an off night. I think we ought to go back to the arena format. We'll have the same winner every week. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know, though. I hate Mr. Slohan's King's Mr. Slohan's King's Indian. Drives me crazy. I've played everything against him. I'm surprised we don't have more games, Mr. Slohan. Like you've been watching my stream for quite a while. We still have only fifty games. There are people like like Nefidov, who has 250. But it seems like you're here pretty often. I would think you'd be getting close to 100 by now. All right, so C5. I don't remember if I must have played this before against you. I guess I played it against him once already. C5. It's like one of the most interesting moves here. Bishop e2. I don't know what's wrong with bishop b2. If c4 to d5, I'm sure about that. If dc5, I have some issues. Willage Lord, you're here first since I started streaming. Really? So Mr. Slohan got in this game for Thursday, because I can only take like two more submissions. We can only go over like five games on Thursday. And then I've got to play. Which will be fun because I never really like stream myself playing in, in Blitz Arenas. But I'm not going to be able to do that much commentary. It's 3-2 rated, and I'm just going to focus on playing. But again, kind of interesting, because I don't do that much at all. So now knight e4. Specialty variation. Okay, interesting. What would your elaption do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being weird. The more distance I put between Mr. Slowhand and Theory and the King's Indian, probably the better. The theme here. Defense of B2. How 
much time we have left. It doesn't matter, it's not an arena. Now, what round is this, anyway? <laughs> Guys, please bring your friends and grandmom. We're down to 31 viewers. I want to get up to 75. Let's try to get up to 75 every stream. For the partnership, make your grandparents and girlfriend log in to my stream. All right. So queen c7. What would Vlad do? DC5. I don't feel like bringing his queen to a good square for him. You know, I'm not really into that. If I take on c5, I'm like helping his queen come to a good square. Why does that help me? Anyway, c4 is a normal move. We, we won't say anything about that. Yeah, if I, if I got spectacular, spectacular Camel to log in with all of his computers, we'd probably have 75 viewers. How many machines do you have? All right, C4. Tired of losing, then you better just change the narrative. Simple as that. I'm ready to challenge this. I'm tired of the knight on E4. I'm ready to play knight C3. I didn't want to block my C pawn, though. So that's why c4. Also controlling d5, of course. I think of a a good a good player who played these kind of lines with white was our own Petron Pal. Hungarian I am. He should have been a GM, but he never got the title. It was a really sad story. He like had two norms in his third norm, like the Russian Grandmaster or something he was supposed to face like went home and forfeited the game or something crazy like that. But anyway, Paul would, would be, he was like a GM strength I am. And he plays, he plays a lot of systems with like really quiet stuff, but black just doesn't get to have any fun. I mean, this is an example. <clears throat> Safe, solid systems where black doesn't have fun like he does normally in the Kings Indian. How about bishop takes d4? I suppose knight takes d4 is stronger. I was having hallucinations that he could play knight to g5. That's kind of funny. Bishop takes d4 unclear because of e5. Although I still think that's good for white. Knight takes d4. Well, seems better and also more natural. Okay. Trade off their, their King's Indian Fiend kind of bishop when you can. Oh, still, if it wasn't for the fact that his knight was hanging on e4, don't tell him about that. You might forget. You am legit. Gorgeous, enchanting mom, whole wheat. Do I want to know what that's about? Wait, is Lemonade Master Fortnite? Are they the same person? Are you kidding me? There's no connection, right? Is Fortnite here? I thought they were different people. Confuse me, Bob. Oh, no problem at all. Yeah, I mean, everybody's streaming. Like, Peter Blako is streaming on, on Chess24. 
I can't compete with like super grandmasters. But um I mean I maybe I can in a way, but not, you know, on paper. It's very possible I might have a different approach to teaching people that's more approachable, but But I mean, Nakamura is, is incorporating video games and other stuff that makes him not like your average chess grandmaster. Which is smart. I don't think that too many of the elite chess players can do that kind of thing. Maybe Grisha could like stream poker or something, but I don't know. You know, not too many are ambidextrous enough. Most chess players are very one dimensional. Yes, of course, dude. The only reason Hikaru is successful is because of chess.com. He owes everything to them. That's another good point. Of course. I mean, they've been supporting him since day one. Massively. And, and chess bra. So he sort of owes them blood money for the rest of his life. Which is kind of a scary thought. It's a scary thought to owe chess.com blood money for the rest of your life. We all have to make sacrifices. Speaking of sacrifices, I almost have something here. <laughs> Damn, dude. Sacrifice. Knight c7, rook a7, the acerbate maneuver. Straight out of Star Trek. I almost have that combo, but it just doesn't quite work. Knight c7, rook a7, let's say rook a d1. But any time I try to bust the knight e7, he has queen e7, queen e7, knight e5, queen e5, saving him from total smackdown. There's probably some kind of win here for white, but I don't, I don't quite see it just yet. We're just going to have to settle for slightly better. And between the, the time and the positional pressure, black should be in pretty bad shape. This is not where you want to be with the black pieces. Bob, obviously that's the case now. But I'm just saying he is where he is because of that, you know. So he may or may not owe them something. I don't know how strong your feeling of your feeling of obligation is. Um Bob and moral obligations. Even a slimy site like chess.com, I would still think that we'd have to owe them for the rest of our lives. Not really, though. I mean, he brought a lot to them, so it's mutual. I understand. It works both ways. I mean, he, he helped chess.com. They helped him, you know. But he certainly, they both benefited. I mean, chess, but I think chess.com would be successful either way. You know, Hikaru wouldn't have been successful um, without them supporting his stream, for sure. So Black is surviving here as I get distracted.
but Bob, it's a very complicated situation. You know, you've got people like Hikaru is sort of supporting both Chess24 and Chess.com in a lot of ways. We just have to go for it here. You can have a pawn. Completely got confused. I got confused. You got confused. Everybody's confused. I thought I was completely falling apart here. I think I was. Bob's plan was all along to like distract me. It's not going to work. Nice try, Bob. All right. Six games done. We have one more round to go. Two on game. Yeah, that that was getting out of control though. I was I was losing my concentration. I totally lost. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I was worse. Maybe not, but it was almost completely coming off of the wheels there. Like I don't know what I, I know where I was when I played like Bishop H three. I'm like, okay, I thought this position was going to win itself. Black is slightly better after an H E seven. Check it out. Jeez. See, the wheels were just completely coming off. All this conversation while I'm trying to play the critical game of the tournament. No conversation. Morales just won again. Let's see. So he beat Astrobate. That's expected. He beat DK Guy. That we saw. He lost the four moves against me. He beat 10-year-old. He beat 10-year-old... What? That's it? Oh, he beat Oms. Wait. He beat Oms. He sent Oms packing. And Parrot Pastor Herrickson, too. One of those G6 hyper accelerated dragons. What happened there? He trapped his queen? Does it even work? E6 resigns, like E6, knight F4, bishop H6. Yeah, it drops a piece. So Morales is unstoppable, unless he drops a piece of four moves. Will Astrobate make the top 10? Bob's colluding, because he's always reading against me. He's trying to help Morales so he wins the tournament. He likes it when he makes me lose. He likes to stir up bad feelings for me. All right, we got the toughest possible pairing. I don't stack up that well against, against DK Guy, stylistically. I don't know. You did the e3 queens at the end. That's not happening. All right. We're not going to play the queens in the end. We play something else. <laughs> we play the something else. I don't know what you play against the, the Blumenfeld. Let's go for that. You know, the other possibility is to play the BOGO. I don't understand. I haven't played a BOGO against DK guy yet. The Blumenfeld is really, really sharp. And in the tournament situation I'm in, I don't want to lose. A draw wouldn't be that bad, but you don't want to risk losing. 
When you can tie for first, maybe win on tie break. I don't recall playing a Bogo with DK Guy. He normally was playing G3 on move four. Well, Cormoran, you know the you know the English with white. But you're an excellent example of, of a homeschooled player, Cormoran. Self taught. But I don't mean that in a bad way. Being self-taught is very good for your creativity. I mean, I'm not really self-taught, but I never had a coach until I was, I never really had a coach. I never had any lessons at all until I was already a FIDE master. I mean, I basically learned from other people, but not formally. So Bishop A6 I play, but it's risky. Maybe we should go for it. Assuming the DK guy doesn't know a lot of theory, um, this Romanitian system kind of trips people up. Though it's actually quite sharp. It's easy enough to get better at tactics, though. Although I think that puzzles are boring. Just play a lot of Blitz, man. If you have time, all of my, all of my ability tactically is from, you know, 98% of my tactical ability is from playing Blitz. 2% from doing tactics puzzles and stuff like that. Sometimes I used to occasionally look at like the Encyclopedia of Middle Games when I was learning, but not much. Just doing. <sighs> okay, I had a game like this against somebody else last week, and I was like, Doubting whether it was right or not, and then I looked at it after the game and I played it right. I had this game with the Swedish GM, Stellan Brynell, like 15 years ago, where I castled in the wrong moment. But this move, though, A3 is, um, is extremely unusual. Why should A3 be bad? I guess it's just kind of slow. Takes, knight takes d4, rook a7 is possible. I think in this case, knight c6 looks better. But I want to, like, just mention that I... I really advocate that guy, I mean, Romanition. He's a legend player, but, I mean, he's really, most importantly... Who played this with black you know he is one of the greatest living opening theoreticians i think still playing chess you know at, at, at practically gm level even though he's like 70. um what an awesome journeyman grandmaster but anyway i don't think a3 is right i've also played this this lines with white yeah, Brian Hill's a GM. He was a GM when I played him, though. He was a GM back in 2006 or whatever. I think he was a relatively late GM, though. He was probably an IM for a long time or something. But he's been a Grandmaster since, since I played him way back. But he was pretty middle-aged, you know. He probably became a GM in his 40s or something. Like 40. Um... But I messed up something against Brynell where I like castled when I was supposed to play. I just messed up the move order against him and then I was slightly worse but managed to draw in this line. I remember that was the last time I think I played it. Okay, so DK guy just plays like safe, solid moves. Rook C8 looks logical. But this is a pretty souped up 
Fiancato. That's what I like to see. The souped up Fiancato. Can trick a lot of people. All right. You surrendered your center. Now, rook c8 isn't the best square, but I'll take it. <sighs> okay, so there's a backwardness here. But it's more than compensated by my good control of the center. an aggressive move obviously it's a nimzo idea it's a classical nimzo type of structure yes bob d5 of course goes without saying that it's it's a alternative here um but it doesn't it isn't automatically necessarily good it may turn out to be the best move but I'm a little nervous about my king still being in the center, so that should be attended to. Tended to. Attend in attendance. Mm Last game of the round. DK guy has a thing for H4. He was lucky with that last time against me. <laughs> um, actually, I defended really well and then blundered later on. I looked at that game. I had played it. I had played it absolutely well and then screwed up. Here it's probably, it's probably worse than his previous attempt. Um, d5 still on, rook b8, h6, I mean h4 is kind of weird, he, he's, he's sort of struggling to find a plan, so let's give him a good plan, okay this is a normal move, I probably should have played it before when Bob said it. Weird position. Hanging pawns, not my specialty. Bob is influencing my play. I mean, obviously d5 is, is a major alternative. Tournament is yours. Whew. And so you, you lost? What if he was lying? What if he like didn't lose and he just said that? Slowhand got you? Um, five and a half though, not a very convincing score in a seven round tournament. Maybe someone else will come from behind. Gotta watch my back. H4. Subliminal H4 messages from Ponda. To raid Rustam, you mean. Hey Rustam, what's up? But is he streaming on chess? That other evil chess site? Or is he actually streaming it? Or he tries to milk both, right? Like, Kamsky tries to stream on Lee Chess and Chess.com simultaneously, which I think is kind of sleazy. Because they're... completely different in principle. 
One site is making money, and the other site is just for the love of chess. Um, I prefer not to raid people who are streaming on chess.com. He doesn't like chess.com, but he's playing there. Oh, the title of Tuesday here. Oh, good. Okay, he doesn't like chess.com. Wonder why. I don't know, whatever you guys feel like. I, I don't mind raiding Kamsky. I, I, I respect him. What's up here? I have to play C4 or some other weird move. I guess I can play another weird move, like 97. It's a strange move here. I can meet knight b3 with, with bishop c4. That would be the point. Then we get tactics. Bob's crush. Wow, e4. Oh my god. No, I think I wouldn't raid John. He has enough viewers already. That's all right. Definitely not. Nothing personal, just, you know. I feel for Kamsky more. This is a nice move, e4. What the heck's going on? Now, Bartholomew is, is partly responsible for chess.com being the monster that it is now. I don't think I want to support him. He seems like a likable enough person, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but. Yeah, that's true. He helped Lee Chess. Like what? How did he help Lee Chess? By gracing them with his presence? Well, I don't think he's trying to help Lee Chess. I think he's just trying to help himself. To be more popular. I wouldn't really call it helping Lee Chess. Fortuna Chess Coach gifting a tier one sub to the community. Turkey farm, good choice. So I'm losing control of the position. DK guy just strategically outplaying me. With very stylistic and risky play in general. Dude is just a verifiable maniac. Dude, another gift sub, another gift sub. Two gift subs. Have you think have you been thinking about taking up career in bullfighting, DK guy? He just gifted five gift subs. Gift one to Gata. Gata. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Dinekis, who's a regular here, got a gift sub. It's enough, man. I can't. I can't take the suspense anymore. I don't know who's better or what's going on. I offered a draw. Like the engine will probably say, "You're crazy. You're clearly better," or something. No, I expected queen a four. I made the right judgment. Yeah, optically, it looks like, wow, you've got this pass pawn on d3, you're all active and everything, and b2's hanging, and the engine's just like, no, it's like plus 1.5 for white. Man, thank you so much for the, the gift subs, Fortuna Chess Coach. Seven gift subs all together. No, I mean, a good cho a good choice here against, against DK Guy. I don't know what he was thinking, but I'm thinking that I was 
not sure at that point. And I had been worse. But he did a really good job, like, lowering my, my, my pawns forward. So here, I'm sort of not really facing a threat. I should have grabbed this pawn on b2. Yeah, he scared me with queen g4. It was a bluff. It looks like, you know, he's trying to play h5, h6, but momentarily there's no threat. So I probably should have grabbed the pawn when I could. h6, he has psychological impact from the last game where he... He played h4, h5 against me and won. Um, this is really messy, though. So I feel thankful for, for DK guy giving me a draw there. Um, my position was a little shaky. Uh, it looks kind of macho, but actually white had everything under control all the time. So it was final result. Seven gift subs for Fortuna Chess Coach. Thank you. Wish you would come a little earlier. We're just finishing up. Six points out of seven. Morales got five. Ten-year-old is still playing. He's had a great tournament. Um, all right, so we did finish on first. Cormoran claims that I'm going to win every week because of the Swiss format. If it gets boring, maybe we'll let you guys have an arena now. <laughs> I'm starting to enjoy actually winning the tournament sometimes. Um, you're still working. You just saw I was on. I wanted to say hi. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Um... Are you guys serious about raiding, raiding Kamsky? Now I don't even see him. Oh, there he is. He's streaming on Lee Chess. IGM got a Kamsky. All right, let's raid him. Anyway, guys, thanks for the, we'll raid him. Thanks for the spread the love. I respect God. He's a good player. Hey. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Congratulations to me. And Morales with a great job. Second place. Mr. Slowhand in third. Let's finish reading out the top ten, guys. And again, thanks to Fortuna Chess Coach. We've got myself. Morales, great job today. Despite the... You came back from the four-move loss. Mr. Slowhand finished in third. Very tough fighting by Mr. Slohan, taking out Morales to finish third. Ten-year-old had a good tournament all the way through, losing the last round, but he was he was playing really well. Um, Pastor Herrickson is tough. Cormoran, DK guy. Not my best opponent. Um, Krevetko, Oms had to leave early, and Chestosterone, thanks for coming back to the stream. So I appreciate you guys. I'll, I'll try to raid Gata there. Um, good player, I think. Relatively strong. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, a little bit of uh, maybe karma. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for thanks for joining me. Bye bye. Oof. Just fun. Over. Makes me laugh. <laughs> Feels bad.
right. He's on Chester. Huh? 